Now, right up over here in the upper left is known as the toolbar, where we can hit buttons to change the behavior of Reaper. But all of this can be customized and changed. For example, this button right here will allow us to left drag to marquee select our items, like this. And the button below it will allow us to use razor editing, all while using left drag, like that. And we could turn them on and off right here. But if we make our track control panel wider, like this, where we just see one row, those two options aren't next to each other. So that's a good reason you might want to customize your toolbar to put these two buttons next to each other. So let's right click and go down here to customize toolbar. And those two options are right here marquee selection and razor editing. If you want to put them together, just drag this one down to here. Let's delete this separator as we don't need it and hit OK. And now these two options are now next to each other. To marquee select our items with left drag or razor edit our items with left drag. But obviously, there's a lot more we could do. Let's right click again, customize toolbar. There's a bunch of options over here that I don't tend to use in the toolbar, like new project, open project, and save project. I tend to do that using the menus over here or the keyboard shortcuts. So I don't need that in my toolbar as it doesn't really provide any feedback. So I can just select them, remove them, do the same with undo and redo, hit OK. Now those options are removed from the toolbar as I can still choose them from this menu or do the undo from this menu or use the keyboard shortcuts. But now we could add some more useful toolbar buttons if we want. For example, when I'm recording, by default, Reaper's going to create takes if I record over a previous pass, like this. Hit record again on top of this. And Reaper created takes, take one and take two. But now in Reaper 7, we could also use lanes. But to turn that on, we have to go up here to the options menu new recording that overlaps existing media items, and choose add lanes over here. Instead, we can create a toolbar button to do this, so we can go back and forth between lanes and takes. So let's right click over here, customize toolbar, and go down here to add an action. And we can choose any action in Reaper to add a custom toolbar. But let's type in toggle add lanes. And there's an action right here that's gonna toggle New recording adds lanes. We can select it here or select and close. And that puts that option down here. Let's right click and add a separator to separate it from the other options. Then we'll add a toolbar button to this. It shows up like this by default, but we could right click it and add any custom toolbar button we want. I'll type lane in the filter and then I'll choose this one. Close it and hit OK. And now it shows up right here. So with it turned on, it looks like this. And now Reaper's gonna create lanes. If I turn it off, it doesn't. Reaper's gonna create takes. Reaper created takes, which you could switch between. But if you prefer lanes, turn this on. We get a visual indication that it's on. And now Reaper's gonna create lanes. That look like this. We could hear this lane or this lane, or choose between them and comp if we want. And we'll always know which option we're using, as we'll see it in the toolbar. This will record lanes, and this will record takes. Another option I use a lot, if we go to the options menu, to so go down here to show effects inserts in the track control panel. If we choose this, we can see our effects right in here. Instead of having to go over here and right click, to see what's on this track, we can see our effects right from here and open them from here as well. It's a bit more convenient, but it does take up space in here. So if we don't want it, 
we might want to turn it off. And we'll turn it off right here. But instead of going to the menu each time, we can create a toolbar button to do this easier or quicker. Just right click, go to Customize Toolbar. We'll go to Add, and we'll type into the filter Show Effects. And right down over here is the options, the Show Effects inserts, and the Track Control Panel. Just select it or select and close. It shows up down here. Then we could add by right clicking a toolbar button, type in Effects, and I'll choose this button. Then close it and save it. And now we have a button to do that for us. Hit it. Now we see our effects in the track control panel. Hit it again in the hidden. So it's a bit quicker to do it right from here instead of opening up the options menu. And we do the same thing for sends. Go to customize toolbar, go to add, type into the filter, show sends. And there's a similar option right here to show sends in the track control panel. Select close, shows up right here. Right click it to give it a toolbar button. I'll choose this option, close it, shows up right here, hit OK. Now we have a button to show our sends. So if we hit it, we can see our sends on each one of our tracks. And if it takes up too much room, just hide it from here. See our effects or see our sends. So we could trigger any actions in Reaper using a toolbar button. Although I do find it most useful to use the ones in the options menu or the ones that have options in their name or toggle, as they will give us visual feedback as to which option is chosen at the moment. But we could also switch our toolbar from up here. If we right click, we could switch our toolbar to any other toolbars we want. As you can see, there's 32 to choose from, and we can customize those as well. I created one for takes, which looks like this. I could choose different takes for each item. Or another one I created for automation to change the automation mode for my tracks. Let's put it back to the main toolbar. And we could also open it separately. So I could choose the takes toolbar that I created, and it shows up separately in its own floating window. Or do the same with the automation one. And it shows up like this. Select the track, put it in right mode, touch, latch, preview, read, or trim. But we could also position the toolbars in different places. So I can move the main toolbar to the top of the main window, and now it shows up over here. Or I could have it floating, and it floats like this. So I could put it anywhere, or put it back in the main toolbar and it shows up over here. So let's customize a new toolbar. I'll go to toolbar three, which is currently unused, hit the edit me button. We could delete this button and we could add any actions we want. Go to add, let's type in grid set. Let's create a toolbar to set a grid. I'll choose this one for whole notes, hold on control on the PC, command on the Mac, and also choose this one and quarter notes, and eighth notes, and sixteenth notes. Select and close it, and they show up over here. Let's rename the toolbar. Hit OK. And now we created this toolbar, which we can resize any size we want, and just switch it to half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, or sixteenth notes, depending on what we need. And if we close it, we could open it up at any point by choosing it right here for grid size. But it's a bit quicker to open it with a keyboard shortcut, which we could do, go to Actions, Show Action List, type into the filter, Toolbar, and we could open different toolbars right here. Let's do Toolbar 3, and I like to use this one. Open Toolbar 3 at Mouse Cursor. We had a keyboard shortcut to this, and now, at any point, if I want to adjust my grid, Hit that keyboard shortcut, and it opens this up right at my mouse cursor. So I could switch it to eighth notes, quarter notes, half notes, or whole notes. Just close it, and from down here, hit the keyboard shortcut, it opens it right here. So very quickly, I could change my grid size. 
Now, if we want to reset the toolbars back to the default, just right click it, go to customize toolbar. Over here are all the default choices. We could drag them over or just reset it all from here. Reset current menu toolbar to default. And it goes back to the default right over here, which looks like this when it's this wide or this when it's this wide. Two rows or just one. So that's pretty much it. That's customizing the toolbars in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Oh!